Howdy friends, I'm Joe, for those of you that don't know, and welcome to another blistering hot summer day on the homestead. Today I wanted to show you what went into building my privacy fence. Actually, it's more like a trash enclosure area, but uh, we'll call it a privacy fence. Uh, keeps my trash private and keeps the dogs out. That's really the big thing. I'm not really gonna show you the fence building because you can find videos on that all over. I'm just gonna kind of go over some tips and tricks, some things that I do that are different that make it easier, maybe not different, but just some little things that can make your job a little bit easier or that you haven't seen yet that might be kind of neat. Take it away. Okay. Tip number one is weight your fence board. Is when you get them, they're really wet and they're gonna get all twisted and stuff like that and it's just no good. So I, what I do is just put some weight in there, try and keep it out of the direct sun. The next tip is kind of just uh, good to have around. You can use it on any sort of project where you're using a post. Tip number two, if you have some bar clamps, take and bar clamp your level onto your post or levels. Tip number 2.5, have your wife dig the holes. Pull that. Third tip, cutting a four by four. This comes in handy anyway. Cutting four by four, four by six, cutting posts or beams. This technique I use. When I'm cutting a four by four, I'll mark three sides of the, the four by four. And then I start my cut and I don't raise, don't take my saw out until I'm finished cutting. Because when you remove the saw, you kind of change your angle and it just doesn't come out right. So just keep the saw in the board at all times. Wow. So this one's really handy. These brackets. They are called an FB 24Z made by Simpson Strong Tie. And what they, focus. They are just, they make it so easy and they make your fence come out really nice and last longer. You know what? Take it away, handsome. Now these things are great because typically when you see a fence, people run the two by four flat. And you'll notice that over time they'll start to sag. These clips allow you to run the two by four, um, I guess you would call it vertically. And a two by four has more strength this way than it does this way. That's why like your floor joists are ran um, vertically rather than horizontally like this because there's just no, no meat here to hold. So these clips are, are really neat for that. So let's go ahead and put one up. Take the your long board before you cut it, put it in there. And it holds it, makes it real easy for one. Level it out. Mark the bottom of your board. Just like that, pretty simple and easy. Makes it real nice, because you don't have to have someone hold it while you're screwing it in. Just sits there and hangs out. Focus, focus on this screw. There it is. Simpson makes these screws. And they're self-drilling. This tip, 
I think it's the, the coolest thing. I mean, it just really ups the defense game. Um, you know what? Let him take care of it. So if there's one tip that you take away from this, I would hope that this would be the one because I think this is the one of the better things you could do for your fence is this board here. So the way that this works is you put this in and this will be this will be just just about ground level. I'm going to bring this up a bit with gravel. <clears throat> and then your fence boards butt into that. And what that does is it keeps these off the ground. One, they break or they're just stuck in the dirt all the time. And you know, like you're weed eating or you're scraping through here and you just kind of beat them up. But this keeps you up off the ground. This will last a lot longer than, than the fence boards. And it also just kind of gives a clean look. Typically I'll pre-drill, especially when you're so close to the edge. What'd you get? I found some jackpot ones. You'll see, show me, open it up. The ones that are falling down in the creek are the most juiciest ones. Oh dear. There's still a bunch. Blackberries. I'm bite. Yeah, you've been eating them, I can tell. Yeah. Are the puppies eating me? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, Olivia, you're gonna get a stomach ache. Um. The delicious one. Strings are really pretty useful in the construction industry. So yeah, pay attention to this one. So I took the measurement off the piece over, the piece that I've already mounted over there. If this is level, which it is, should be able to take that measurement and bring it over here and transfer it to the post here. Now this, that mark there and the top of that fence is level. I'll take a string and run it off the top of that over to here and that'll give me my height, level height, to cut my, uh, my fence boards. Anytime you're doing angles, just show this one off. This will this will help out if you if you ever get the chance. Use it. As you might be able to tell, this board here is sloped following the, the grade of the, the ground. And I want to figure out what this angle is so that I can transfer that to my deck boards. So what I'll do is I'll just take a scrap piece of wood. I'm using a lighter colored wood so you can see the pencil. And I'll mark it right along the post on the back and then take the square, speed square, go right to the point, and uh, follow that mark, and then look down on my square, and it says it's about six degrees. So I know now that I need to cut my angle on my boards at six degrees all the way through. Being that this wood is uh, very green or wet, I know it's gonna shrink over time. So I will measure, I'm gonna go right up against the next board and I'll measure right on the edge of the other board. And that was 59 and a half. So I'll mark 59 and a half. Run that mark all the way through and then try not to move it, your square and find six degrees back here. Mark that through. And that's your cut. And cut it. Uh, 
And that was long point. This will be my face. And that 59 was long point. how to mark things through is really a big deal. Yeah, I remember when I first started, you just start throwing your tape wild and, and then you end up with this thing that you cut and it doesn't even fit. You don't even, <laughs> and then you start to understand, oh, I have to, where my tape goes is where my measurements are made. And yeah, so that's always, it's always nice to have. And, and always remember, you know, to tape control, tape control. A lot of this has to do with tape control, so you can't just stab your tape anywhere and, and hope for it. You want to make sure that the edge of your tape that's going to touch the wood is right on the corner there. And measure to the string. You could measure over here, but then you'd be off at an angle and it's not going to give you the correct measurement. So now I'm at 58 and 3 sixteenths. Hopefully this was helpful and you got some good ideas and some things you can carry in your back pocket and use later on, not only on a fence. I'm also doing a video on that gate there. I call it the Z gate. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.